Hi friends, I am Becky Helms of ThePinkSamurai.com and today's Enamel Pins 101 video is going to be all about seconds. So uh, let's get into it. <laughs> so seconds pins are pins that are less than perfect. They are still pretty good, they're, they're still sellable, but there are, they're just not quite there, you know, and that just comes with the process. Uh, human beings still make <laughs> all of it, uh, even though some of it's machined, and there can be errors, just like if you have um, like prints with rounded corners, and sometimes the corners aren't quite right, or um, it just any kind of creative process. If you were making it yourself, you'd probably make some mistakes, and and that's natural. So. Um, a lot of people will sell their seconds and I just kind of wanted to talk about my criteria for <laughs> <they're green. laughs> my criteria for seconds pens and um, maybe help you if you're looking at your stuff and wondering well, I don't know if, if I can do this or not so um, let's take a look so 10 to 15 percent um, defective I guess is um, pretty standard so if you order a hundred and you see 10 are not quite right then that's pretty normal so don't freak out 15 is kind of pushing it and if you're getting up to 20 you're gonna want to have to talk to your to your supplier about it so some people if you're using a middlewoman or a middleman they can take care of that for you which is nice so you don't really have to worry about the interaction with the uh, manufacturer there sometimes manufacturers will give you credit probably not as much as you would hope but um, they can they sometimes they do it I have had a manufacturer um, replace a portion of what it is and I've had someone replace just outright and it really depends on kind of the severity of it and um, just the manufacturer and kind of what their policies are so definitely don't feel bad about contacting them if you really feel like something's wrong like i got a whole shipment of limited edition christmas trees i will tell you and the and this is something that can happen the gold plating on it was contaminated so it didn't adhere to the alloy and the metal underneath correctly so it looked nasty all of them just looked really tarnished because the gold plating was not even and I couldn't sell any of them and in that case they replaced half of them which was not ideal but I could still sell um, the others as seconds pins so I wasn't totally losing money but I was I kind of lost the money on that because I couldn't sell them all um, at full price. So just to give you an example of an actual real experience <laughs> that happened. But in that same batch, I had um, some of my gnome pins and all of them were tarnished too. And those were tarnished. Tarnished isn't the right word. The, the metal was contaminated. The, the gold plating was contaminated. But they were so much more severe than the trees that they uh, that my manufacturer did replace a hundred percent of those which was really nice because there are some that I didn't even feel comfortable selling as seconds because they were so yucky <laughs> they were just really grody so um so that's just that's just something that happened to me and uh it's nice to hear <laughs> stories of other people's misfortunes I think so <laughs> you're not alone it happens So here are some examples of what I would take out or what I would really consider a second. So with uh, soft enamel pins, missing enamel can be a thing. Um, like I said in the first video in the series, they use little machines to fill in all the holes and sometimes the holes just don't get filled right. So you get um, like this one where I have a kitty with a missing leg and it's not cute. It's very obvious. <laughs> So that's not something that I would sell at full price. There's also black spots that can show up. Some of this is part of the polishing process. So if you have like a little microfiber cloth um, or just a soft uh, cloth with you when you're kind of unpacking, you can just kind of rub them down and um, just kind of shine them up. And sometimes the little black spots will go away. Uh, sometimes they don't sometimes they're just stuck on there and there's nothing you can do about it and those look weird like this little beauty mark on my little Easter bunny so 
uh, that one is just noticeable enough for me that I wouldn't want to sell it at full price. So I talked about the tarnish a little bit for gold. It, uh, it is more of a contamination in the uh, gold plating solution, which has been my experience. Um, I'm not sure if they can actually get tarnished, um, the, you know, in the proper definition of it. I know that silver enamel pins can, and there are special um, things you can do to take care of tarnish for silver enamel. I don't have a lot of experience with that. And you can also have like a little silver polish cloth. So if they show up looking a little uh, janky, uh, try to polish it off. I think there are some solutions that can help with that, but um, keep in mind that silver versus gold. Um, don't use a silver polish on a gold pin because it could rub off the rest of the um, finish and that's not good <laughs> so don't do that another example is missing finish so a lot of times it happens on the edge I'm not sure where in the process it happens in making the pin but sometimes it's just it's just not there so in this example of one of the pins that I did with Stacia Burrington um, for my pin club they it's just missing and I think it's tacky and those can be hard to notice because you're looking at the front of the pen usually and you're like yeah this is good put it away and then you package everything up and then you go to sell it and you're, you finally see the edge of it <laughs> and you're like ooh, not cute so definitely um, look at all parts of your pen <laughs> and um, uh, to check for any flaws. So there's really nothing you can do about that, but the front is still nice, so I think it's still sellable. All of these examples I think are still sellable, but just at a discount. Okay, so there are a few ways to actually sell your seconds pens. Make sure they're clearly marked. Um, I think it would be really tacky if you sell it to someone who thinks it is perfectly fine and they get it and it's icky. Like, people will notice that. So make sure it's clearly marked. I like to mark mine down um, 50%. I know that's a lot. Some people don't always do that. Uh, but I see it as um, kind of a service to folks. Like, you're really getting a discount because you know it's not perfect, you know? So what I like to do is have sales every couple of months, um, every two or three months, and I have it up for a weekend. And that way there's some urgency and people wanna grab them really quickly and, um, and then they get out the door fast. So I'll save up a bunch and then that way I have a big variety of stuff and just kind of dump it and then go. So uh, once Monday hits, I, I cut them off and then if there are any left over, I'll save them for the next round. Um, but a lot of times they sell out completely because people love a good deal. So that's how I do it. Um, some people set up um, like kind of charity loops. I know there are a bunch of folks, speaking of Serena from Oplesiosaur, she does charities um, with a lot of pin makers. So she'll get extras, things that are replacements and stuff like that. And um, she will sell those. And then all of the proceeds go to charity, which I think is amazing. They sold, I think they made tens of thousands of dollars for charity um, last year, which was really, really great. <laughs> and some people get their seconds and just leave them up in their shop as just kind of an option to buy. So if someone's browsing and they see that they could get one that's kind of meh um, for, you know, six bucks as opposed to 10, then people will do that. Uh, so there's really no right or wrong way to sell a seconds pin. So just kind of figure out what works best for you. Um, what I like to do is when I'm when I'm packaging pins, I set aside the stuff that I don't like, and then I end up with a big pile of stuff, and then I uh, take out I do take my inventory, and then I'll put them up. Okay, so that's about it for seconds. We talked about um, like the normal amount of seconds that you get. We talked about kind of how to approach your supplier uh, if you get a whole bunch. Um, some examples <laughs> of my own misfortunes with with seconds and then we talked about the examples and um, and kind of how to sell them. So I think that's about it. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, share it to your friends who have questions about seconds too. And if you have any other questions, um, I would love to help out. Just shoot a comment down below and I will try to help you out. So thanks, I hope it's been helpful. See you in the next video, bye.